Uh, so yeah. I'm doing a React Andy hour, kind of like I did the, uh, a month ago. I like doing this once a month. It helps me stay engaged with, uh, the DBD community. And also it helps you guys prevent me from saying stupid shit that I might not have caught myself. And that was very useful last time. Uh, so I need some videos in the community. What do you guys got for me? Oh my God, Spook and Juice. Dude, I, okay. Is, is this a hot take? I feel like that dude gets way more shit than he deserves. Like he, he plays like, uh, you know, he does like Basement Bubba and shit like that. But from what I've seen of his like personality, he's very like down to earth and accepts it's just a game. And I think that's the main like, attitude you're supposed to have. I think like people like take him camping in the game as to like he's a piece of shit human being, but he seems like a good dude with a family. I don't know. I I really have like an issue with him. Dead by Daylight is dying. Do you guys think it's dying first off before I start? I do not think it is dying at all. I don't think this game will die for a very long time because there's still not much of a competitor. Um, the closest thing is nothing. There there hasn't been no closest thing. It's just a title to attract people to talk. I mean, <laughs> you guys linked it, so it's working. All right. After we're talking to each other. All right, let's see. I think it's trending nowards. I think that's that's fair. Make sure the audio is good. I want to make sure this is loud enough. I really hate to say it, but I think we all know it's true at this point. Let's see. Dead by Daylight is not in a good place. That's and fair. And I think it comes down to three reasons. So let's talk about it. Reason number one is hackers. Because although Behavior has been banning tens of thousands of hackers, and they've also made it to where hackers can no longer hold people hostage in games anymore, which was a huge uh, problem a few months back, they are still able to easily go in and get people's IP address. Okay, that's definitely different. There's He's talking about actual hackers, not like cheaters. Um, I will say DBD has gotten way better with cheaters. I've definitely noticed that in the past year. There have been way less cheaters overall. He's actually talking about legit hacker mans. People always confuse hackers and cheaters. They're very different. Doing, you know, coordinated and successful DDoS attacks on multiple people and the people in their lobbies, that's more along the lines of actual hacking, whereas people just running scripts to fly around the map and just, you know, do whatever. That's just cheating. So um, I think the cheating has gotten significantly better. But yeah, this shit is concerning for real. And DDoS them or tank their internet, essentially. This has primarily been happening to streamers, obviously, because the hackers want attention, but it can happen to anybody. From the looks of it, they can just look at a lobby with your username and just figure out where you are and completely that is true, sadly. shut your internet off. Dead by Daylight is clearly not a safe place to be, especially if you stream the game. Hackers have also been targeting people in other ways. Myself, I've had the same hacker stalking me for a year, and what they do is <laughs> they wait till I go live, then they log on to a PC account with a Prestige 100 Bubba and they start hacking, flying <laughs> around, instantly killing people. And then in the end game chat, they tell people to kill themselves and say that they like little kids, among other things. So then people will come to my chat. And Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's funny, but also completely fucked up. I'm not going to not laugh at that. Seeing the bubble flying across the air was genuinely hilarious, but that sounds so annoying to deal with if you're him. That sounds so annoying. Look, I think if you ever go against a person that is deliberately cheating and they their name is a streamer name, you'd have to be an absolute moron to believe that that's the actual streamer. Like, they wouldn't be banned from Twitch, the game, everything. Like, I don't know. On the one hand, I'm sure he's gotten a couple of dumbasses coming in his chat accusing him of cheating. Like, But you'd have to be so stupid to think that someone would be on a stream with more than five followers actively displaying cheating. Like, it just... You'd have to be such an idiot. You just described the DVD community. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's fair. And uh, say, you know, I'm reporting you, you're a cheater. They do it so people will come and accuse me of cheating and that it causes a big ruckus during my stream. So people will accuse me of not only cheating, but saying really terrible things to people. Obviously, there's not much I can do about this. I just have to say, hey, I play on PlayStation. And yeah, that wasn't me. You can. Oh yeah, different platform and, too. Yeah, that that's about all I can do. The second reason Dead by Daylight is in a really bad place. I saw odds flying over Manhattan. <laughs> I don't know why that comment was so funny. I just imagined a T posing odd star, but just like just zooming across the country. I don't know why the mental image is so goddamn funny to me. All right, let's move on. Oh, you know what I said I would do last time? I said I'd bring the chat on. 
the screen and I didn't do that. And it's already too late. I'm in too deep. I screwed up. All right. There's always next month. This right now is because the new content they've been releasing is complete and utter shit. First, there was the knight who was this super cool, badass medieval knight who zones people, puts down guards and just makes them run away, makes them run forward. That's what that's what the knight does. Not to mention the map that he came yep. with is also shit. I don't even remember what the name of the map is. I always forget. I Chat, actually what's forget the name? That the map even <laughs> exists until I randomly. People on YouTube, if you're watching this, I have a Borgo emote for some stupid reason. And it's my stupid face with. Yeah, there it is. All right. <laughs> uh, get the map uh, in rotation because nobody uses the map offering, at least not that I see. I'll randomly appear on that map and I'll go, oh, wow. I forgot that this garbage exists. <laughs> he does have a decent Mori though, so I'll give him that. Sure. And then we have the Skull Merchant. Most of you know how I feel about the Skull Merchant. It's the same way most people feel about the Skull Merchant. We, we all thought we were gonna get this really awesome, badass cyborg killer. And what did we get? Another fucking zoning killer. Another. I feel like I'm the only person that had zero preconceived notions as to what we're getting because I didn't even watch the teaser for the killer because I just didn't care. Like, I only care about what the killer does, not what, ooh, what's its potential? I think I'm the only person who just didn't give a shit about that aspect of it. I wasn't disappointed because I didn't even watch it. Another killer that places something down that has a big radius and a big zone that you just have to run out of and just, again, hold forward, hold forward or you die. And guess what? When it gets to three gens left, you just place down your drones on the gens. And just with night, when there's a three gens, you just can place your fucking knights to guard the gens. It's so fun. It's such a <laughs> good time. One redeeming factor about these two chapters is the survivors. I think that Vittorio is really cool. I also think that Talitha and Hinatu are also really cool. So the survivors are cool. I like them. But the killers... Is that how you actually say ass. it? I think it's also the fact oh, that Oh, that makes sense because you don't back. pronounce ours. I mean, people wait three months for new content in this game. So you just, you wait three months and you get the night. And That's you're like, true. ugh. And then you wait three more months and you're like, all right. And then you get the skull merchant and you're like, ugh. They both feel lazy and uninspired. Luckily, the next chapter will be during Dead by Daylight's anniversary, which they usually reveal something big and cool. It's usually a licensed chapter, so... Fingers oh. crossed we get some sort of saving grace. I really- Hold forward or you die is like half the killers at this point. Uh, the problem is her power is literally just three gen. Hmm. Hold forward or you die is like half the killers at this point. Well, it's definitely an interesting talking point because if you design killers that have strong anti-loop, then yeah, you push people into holding forward and leaving the loop. But if you design killers that don't have anti-loop, then they are pushed towards things like holding three gens because they're not strong enough to end chases quickly. And so, Skyward, thank you. Appreciate that, man. It seems like we're just stuck in this, like, awkward position where if they don't make the chase really strong, then the control is strong, which is just equally boring in a completely separate direction. Why can't they just make 87 hillbillies and Weskers in a row? Just make Wesker and Hillbilly with different models every time. And that's all we need. <laughs> and now let, I want to go over again real quick why I think Wesker is so well designed. It's because he has things that counter the whole W. So the killer is not feeling that bad if the survivor makes distance. At the same time, he has counterplay once he's actually on your ass. And you can actually juke his power. You can bait windows. Pallets still will stop him on, uh, especially on uh, short loops. They do not, he can't vault over it. It won't do anything. Um, there's that excellent back and forth between both players that is good. And he also has a built-in slowdown, which makes him feel stronger as killer. But he can be countered as a survivor as well. And that's why Wesker, I think, is such a great design. Because he counters all of the boring parts of the game, which is the holding forward being the only option you have, but he also doesn't have to rely on things like three gens and stuff like that because his chase is good enough if the player is good to not need that kind of stuff. And that's why he's such awesome design, in my opinion. Killer with Blight's moving, but no lethal rush that does damage. Mm. Sort of. Base kit Blight's a lot of fun to go against too. I agree. Although I will say going against the Master Blight, even base kit is rough. It's hard. It's definitely on the higher end of shit this is hard to go against but i i can't complain i don't really i don't think it's unfair it just it's you know that's like i think wesker is like the perfect design killer in terms of strength
I know I made like 10 videos about how much I like Wesker, but I legit think he is, yeah, he's just the, the most well-designed killer that we have, uh, at least recently. Maybe not ever, but recently. The problem isn't anti-loop, it's anti-choice. Exactly. I made a video about that too. Um, it's not that killers have a power that counters looping. It's that they, they make killers that have, they provide you with only one correct option to make. That's what's the most boring part. And that is, yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. It's killers like Skull Merchant and The Knight, there's only a single correct option to make anytime they make a play. So you're just following a flow chart at this point. You're not making decisions as an informed player. You're just looking at a flow chart. Okay, she dropped thing, I leave here. Knight drop guard here, I leave loop. Like you just, it's, there's no choice. There's no skill. You just do the same option every single time. And that's what's boring. They should put Mario and Luigi in DBD. Okay, let's continue. I hope it's not a third Resident Evil chapter. I know there's lots of Resident Evil fans who play the game, and I think Resident Evil's cool, but for the love of God, something new, please. I I don't want... I, I Maybe it's just me. You know what? Fuck me. But you know, just please. Something new. I don't want Resident Evil Chapter 3. But <laughs> hey, you know what? Even if it is a third Resident Evil chapter, it'll still probably be better than the two dumpster fires we just got. Reason number three, this game is Agreed. dying and in a terrible place. It's a big shocker. It's the <clears throat> player base. It's the community. I still, to this day, cannot believe the amount of whiny, fully grown, tantrum-throwing adult toddlers that play this game. If it's not people in the endgame chat blowing up at people, calling them names or slur- I think legit most of this community is they're actually, like, children. Well, that's not true. I remember when the average age of the uh, the average DBD comp player was pulled. The average age was literally 17 years old. They, they were actually children. And at that point, I don't even, like, it feels weird criticizing children because, like, they're fucking kids. Like, of course they're going to say dumb stuff. Um, so I think the, commu <laughs> the community is not man children. It's just literal children. Now, of course, of course, there are obviously adults, too that are embarrassing in various ways and that's 100 percent true but I, I do think this the game's audience skews like pretty young actually um then again i remember asking that that was like a couple years ago those comp 17 year olds are now you know 20 so they're still very young but for the most part i think the audience skews very very young like have you seen the average stan on twitter for like the characters in this game they're you know they range from like you know 17 18 which is close to being an adult, but it's, they're, they're very young. ...or threatening them, or people on their streams pulling up other Discord profiles and Twitch accounts, shaming them for their viewers, or threatening them in some way. It's people on Twitter. It's, a, it's people on Twitter just posting screenshots of endgame chats or pictures of, of them getting slugged on the ground and just, wah, wah, boo-hoo, my fucking life is over. I, I don't know what mm. I'm going to do. God help me. <laughs> as funny as that is. Okay. How, how controversial do you think it is if you have a killer do something, like say they bleed you out, and you take a screenshot of the match of the killer just standing above you, and you just go like, wow, this killer is a piece of shit. I, I don't necessarily think that's super bad. Now, I think there's varying levels of severity with this. Who cares why I post that? I don't know, because people, like-minded people that follow you on Twitter because they're also Survivor players want to have a bonding moment with you where they also have that happen and they're like, oh, I've been there, girlfriend, XD, and then some gif from a reality show. His point is that it's whiny? Oh, absolutely. But to me, that's pretty much every game community ever. So true, bestie. Side rant. Anyone that ever calls me bestie, I want to do violence <laughs> i hate that shit so much i'm not going to but oh 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 it tilts me all right um there's also the fact that people take the screenshots and uh remove the context yes that is that is definitely a huge issue but to be fair that's only an issue if they are referring to the player for example if they um take a screenshot of getting slugged and say this streamer and then list the streamer who did that just did this for X reasons or whatever, and then that's it. They just, that's the entire tweet. Yes. Then that becomes very problematic. I don't think it's a problem if people 
aren't referring to specific players. They're just venting about having a super shitty game against a super shitty player. I think that's completely fine, and you should be allowed to do that on Twitter, because what else are you going to do on Twitter? There's nothing of value on Twitter. That's what it's for, dumb shit like that. But if in that tweet you are talking about someone specifically, like an actual player, and you don't provide the context of why the scenario happened, then yes, then it starts to muddy the waters a bit, and then it's like, okay, you probably shouldn't do that. At the same time, though, if someone does something truly reprehensible, you know, like say, well, that's the thing. It depends what you consider reprehensible at that point. Some people consider getting tunneled and camped reprehensible and all that shit, which I'm going to have to agree with Spook and Jukes is stupid. I think the only thing that crosses into toxicity and stuff like that is when people start going personal. Sorry, right, buddy. When people start having personal attacks against you and not just the way you played and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's, that, that's what a lot, a lot of his videos are. It's about people that take that, you know, uh, that post-game chat or something like that to the next level and take it out of that. And then continue talking about what that person did as if they murdered a child or something like that. Um, when in reality, they might have just played like a piece of shit. Like, I'm totally fine with people getting shit. If you play like an asshole and in a post-game chat, they're like, hey, you're an asshole. That's fine. I think you should be allowed to do that because, you know, if you're going to play like an asshole, you probably deserve to get called like one. Uh, but that's it. That's, that's basically where that ends. Um, I fucking hate all of you calling me best here right now. <laughs> I know you guys are trolling me, so it doesn't bother me. She talking in endgame chat is whatever continued after the game is where it goes too far. Yes, that's I was actually talking to him on Twitter about that earlier today. I completely agree with that. Um, let me just uh, back up a bit to make sure I don't miss any points that he was making. It's people on Twitter just posting screenshots of endgame chats or pictures of, of them getting slugged on the ground and mm -hmm. just where where boo hoo my fucking life is over. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. God help me. So See, I, okay, back to his original point. I, I really don't think that's that bad. I think, like I said, most of the people that play this game are basically children and having kids just rant about a shitty match. As long as it's not targeting someone, I don't think that's much of a problem. I think that happens in every community of every game ever made, right? I mean, I think you can look into any hashtag for any game and find 8,000 people bitching about it. Um, it's not... It's not good, but it's not... I don't think it's a problem or a sign that the community is bad or that it's dying or anything like that. Because that's every single game. I bet there's people bitching about Minecraft somehow. There's probably people bitching about single-player Minecraft. So I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Until you bring it personal, then it becomes a huge deal. Uh, Karim Morrow, thank you for the 11 months. Fuck Minecraft. Minecraft's fun. Fuck you guys. Jen and I have a server and we have a little house with some sheep. Some of you really need to take a long, hard look in the mirror and get your shit together. Someone just sent me a clip of a TTV that told another TTV to kill themselves because the killer camped when all the gens were done. Okay, that's what I mean, taking yeah, it too far. That's that, That's actually the next video that I'm posting after this one, so be on the lookout. If your idea of fun revolves solely around how other people play, I I've got a newsflash for you. You need to take your PC or your console and put it in the fucking trash can <laughs> because that's not how games work and that's not how the world works. It's perfectly okay to not like certain playstyles or certain killers or certain perks. Nothing wrong with that at all. But guess what? You can just go to the next game. Go to the next fucking match. You don't have to you don't have to just just dig into them and fucking insult them and take screenshots and post Okay, it, it sounds like he's going for the personal angle, which I would agree with. If it's just a random screenshot of you venting about a killer, blah, 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 I think that's fine, and I, I don't have any problems with that. But yeah, if you're targeting someone specifically with that, then I agree. Post it on Twitter and post little fucking clips of, look at this fucking person, person slugging me. I can't believe it. They must be banned. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And you want to know the saddest part is that I believe that reason one and two can actually be fixed. Like, I think that behavior can solve the hacking issue. They've already been working on it. I think that they can make their game more secure, and I hope that they will. And I also think mm -hmm. that they can make better chapters. I think they can redeem themselves by releasing killers and survivors and maps that are really fun and new perks and stuff like that. I think those two things can be fixed. But I don't think Reason 3 can be fixed at this point. Every time I go on Twitter, 
every time I check my emails and see what people have mm. sent me and the experiences they've had with players in this game, it just it just reminds me. What do you guys think is more likely to be fixed? The game <laughs> or the community for the game? <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough one in my opinion, man. I don't know. That's rough. <laughs> I actually don't know how to answer. That's like a really good question. <laughs> Neither. I don't know. I feel like the devs have had basically seven years now to fix a lot of issues. And they have definitely fixed a lot of issues. But it seems like every time uh, an issue gets fixed, a new one crops up. So it's more just like stirring a pot of shit rather than taking the shit out of the cauldron, you know? And in terms of the community, the thing is they have sort of a tangential relationship with each other. Because if the game is made better, there are less scenarios in which toxic... I say toxic, as they call it, situations will arrive in the game. You know what I mean? If there's less incentive to camp or camping is made harder, if tunneling is made harder, if, I, you know, all the things that people would bitch about in post-game chat or do all these things that he's talking about, if those things were less prevalent, the community would have less complaints, and then that actually would address that part he was talking about, too, of having less people bitching and all that stuff. So... Those things actually, in my opinion, are pretty related. Now, you're still always going to have people bitching no matter what. But I think those go hand in hand. I think they're both equally unlikely to happen, though. Because, like I said, it's been seven years. And although the game is in a better state than it was, it's still, you know, not, not much better. And it's because it's not like a constant line. Oh, the game started out, you know, down here and we're going up and up and up. DBD is just like it's the bumpiest road ever. We have pa like periods of like, you know, maybe six months where we have two good patches and we're like, oh shit, game's actually doing good. And then we get the Night and Skull Merchant. We're like, yeah, fuck this game. This game's dying again. It's where like everyone is very reactionary to the last patches that we've had. Um, and it's really hard to look at the history that the game has had as a whole, um, as opposed to just what the last thing that came out was. I'm a reactor man, but I, we don't look that similar. What the fuck? How do we, how are you even saying that? We both have like brown hair and a drum set and posters in the background and a wife. All right. That this shit is never going to change. And you know what? It's a shame because if the player base wasn't so elitist and standoffish and entitled, I think that the player base would be much higher. That I think is definitely more true. People would stick around, but people load in and they start playing a match as killer or even survivor, and they just have people fucking screaming at them, taking their information and putting it on Twitter, taking their information and putting it on their on their fucking stream to shame them for what they did, how they played the game. It is pure insanity, and the fact that some of you can't realize the way that you're acting and how absolutely absurd it is. <clears throat> I have no words. Anyways, I'm gonna stop ranting. Dark times and Dead by Daylight. Let's hope it gets better. Okay. So I, I pretty much agree with most of the things that he said. I just don't agree with the title of this video, which is Dead by Daylight is Dying. Because um, nothing he really talked about indicates that it's actually dying. I think that's more just a title that's more enticing to, you know, to click on. Um, but I, I don't think that the game is dying in any way whatsoever. It's just in a shitty spot right now. And the game has been in shitty spots like 17 times. And depending on your view of the game, fortunately or unfortunately, it has bounced back basically every single time. We are definitely in the pit of shit territory right now. Um, which means we are due for something good relatively soon. Probably the anniversary will, will be decent because I don't think we've ever... Have we ever had three shitty patches in a row? I feel like we've never had three shits in a row. It's not even copium. I'm just like, I'm trying to think of the history of the game. When have we, when have we ever had three shit killers in a row? <laughs> We're about to. <laughs> mm. I think Spook sees the uh, worst bit of the community uh, due to the nature of his content. Yeah, his content definitely attracts that kind of um, behavior. Not to say that the behavior is justified in any way. But, you know, if you play Basement Bubba while hilarious, it's going to result in more people giving you shit. And so I'm sure he gets a lot more shit in his post-game chats than, than someone like I would. Um, and also, he posts videos about people being shits, too, which probably attracts more people. So, yeah, I, I understand he probably would have a more jaded view about the community of the game. I, I genuinely don't think the community of the game is that bad. I do agree that they're extremely entitled. 
this game, uh, this community has an extremely entitled community. I wouldn't say they're very toxic, though. Compared to, you know, Dota and Call of Duty that I played, this game's community is actually relatively nice. Um, but they are extremely entitled. Everyone thinks they are entitled to have their good time and no one else is. That is absolutely true. That sounds like he's actively contributing to the shit that he's complaining about. See, this is where I think that people give him shit. And this is where I don't think that they deserve it. Like, if he plays... I, I, I haven't watched the stream in a while, I'll be honest. I don't watch anyone play DVD. I don't watch... I don't watch Zubat play. He's one of my friends. Um, if he has like a basement bubble game and someone says, wow, you're fucking boring in post game chat or something. That's the thing. I don't think he's really going to complain about it. I bet he would just go mm -hmm, and just move on. And that's why I appreciate his attitude, because I think that's more of the attitude that you, ha you should have is that as soon as the game is over, you click the next, you know, leave match and then it's out of your head forever. That's that's how that should be. That's what the community's Hello, attitude should be like. Ah! That was, why is that so loud? <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Junt. Oh yeah, Jen and I went to the security office today and got her name changed. She is now officially Jennifer Junt. That was so loud though, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'd say I do agree with most of the stuff that he is saying, except the title, which is definitely not true. Uh, I would not say that the game is dying at all. We're just in a certainly rough spot now that we will undoubtedly bounce back from. 